This video will cover the topic, finding the domain of a fractional function involving radicals. The domain of a function refers to all inputs into the function that produce a real defined output. We can write these values in interval notation. Let's break it down. Consider the function f of x equals the square root of 9 plus x over negative 7 minus x. To find the domain of this function, we want to find which values of x can be plugged into this equation to get a real defined value for y. First let's look at the denominator of the fraction and see if there are any x values that could make this not real or defined. I know that the bottom of a fraction can't equal zero or else the fraction is undefined. But how do we find which value of x would make the bottom of the fraction equal zero? Great observation. If the denominator of a fraction equals zero, then the whole fraction is undefined. So negative seven minus x cannot equal zero. Let's write that out as an equation and then solve for x. Negative seven minus x cannot equal zero. If we add seven to both sides, we see that negative x cannot equal seven. And then if we multiply both sides by negative one, we see that x cannot equal negative seven. Great, are we done yet? Not yet. Next we have to check if there are any x values that would make the numerator not real or undefined. So should we set the numerator equal to zero and then solve for x? Actually, if the numerator of the fraction equals zero, then the fraction is still defined, it just takes the value of zero. If the denominator equals zero, then we're dividing by zero, which is why that would make the function undefined. So if at some x value the numerator equals zero, that's okay. It can still be in the domain. But if the denominator equals zero, then the fraction is undefined at that x value. So then it's not in the domain? Right. So then how do we check which values would make the numerator undefined or not real? Let's consider what functions we have in the numerator we see a square root, what values would make the square root not real or undefined? Well, I don't think you can take the square root of a negative number. Right, if you take the square root of a negative number, then you get a non-real answer. So which values of x would make the terms inside of our square root not less than zero or not negative? Could we set up the inequality nine plus x is greater than or equal to zero and then solve for x? You got it because when nine plus x is greater than or equal to zero, that's when it's not less than zero. So, if nine plus x is greater than or equal to zero, then if we subtract nine from both sides, we see that x must be greater than or equal to negative nine. So what we found is that x cannot equal negative seven, and x must be greater than or equal to negative nine. Our final step is to write our domain as an interval that includes all real numbers that x can equal. The interval including all real numbers would look like this, negative infinity to infinity, and we're just going to edit this so that it doesn't include negative seven and so that it only includes x values greater than or equal to negative nine. First, let's rewrite it so that it doesn't include negative seven. Now our interval goes from negative infinity up to but not including negative seven, and we're combining that with the interval going from just above negative seven up to positive infinity. Finally, let's rewrite this so that it only includes x values that are greater than or equal to negative nine. The only change when we do that is that instead of our first interval going from negative infinity to negative seven, it goes from just negative nine up to negative seven. Why is there a square bracket next to negative nine instead of a round parentheses? A square bracket next to the number means that that number is included in our interval. Since negative nine could be plugged into our function and we would get a real number, zero, it should be included in our domain and so we use a square bracket when we write our interval. With our number negative seven, we can include any number close to negative seven but we can't actually include negative seven because that would make the denominator equal zero. So that's why we use round parentheses in that case. And now that we've written our interval so that it includes all the values within our domain and no values that are not in our domain, this is our final answer. Let me make sure I got this. 
To find the domain of a function, we find all values of x that can be plugged into our function to get a real defined value. We write all of these values in interval notation. That's exactly right. 